Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. It's part 61 today and we are back for big Premier League games after a pretty solid start. We face Tottenham and Manchester United. Two of the big boys who we expect to give us an almighty challenge after what's been a good start that's just starting to tail off. Those one goal wins we were relying on are drying up very quickly and this could become tricky before we know it. We've also got some contract news and some big stuff off the pitch too. So if you want to stay up to date and you are enjoying the series, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on for daily FM21 content. And you can catch up with all the playlists, including the live stream series and the podcast channel in the eye above. And thank you again for your continued support. But after the interesting end to the transfer window last time and a stunning start to the Premier League season, you can already see from the top right there that we have finally started to concede goals. But it didn't happen straight away, it must be said. If we go and have a look at the schedule, after you were with me, we drew 0-0 away at Cardiff following the international break. And then after that, we beat Wolves 1-0 with Gineppo getting a winner. Injuries to Amp Folwell haven't helped us in front of goal but we still don't look particularly fluent. A 3-1 win followed against Aston Villa in the Carabao Cup, Lacero, Hydara and Ward-Prowse with a second half penalty. Before our first league defeat of the season, 2-0 at Everton, as things just start to dry up on the road. So as we come up against these big sides, these sides that are investing, expected to finish top half, I feel like our start to the season might start to wane. We have had a little bit of a false storm with the fixtures we started with, and after the first six that were all pretty winnable, We've now got a pretty tricky run. So Tottenham and Manchester United going to be big tests today. And they're of course what we're going to focus on in today's action. But before that very quickly, you'll notice we've come back a day before the Tottenham game. Now don't worry, it's not a job offer this time. But I have to say, I was getting to the stage where I looked at our start and thought, do we need to try and take advantage now? But then Southampton must have read my mind because they've come in with this. 78 grand a week, a big upgrade anyway, on a four year deal. So they're offering us a three-year extension to what we've got already. Now, basically, that means if we get sacked at any point in the next two years, we're going to be getting millions out of it. The transfer budget is a concern. I don't really understand why the director of football isn't following the club culture, but I can't turn that down. We've got to be realistic here. It's nearly 80 grand a week on a four-year contract. It's life-changing. So all we're going to do really is see if we can negotiate the relegation clause down and get up to 80 grand a week. I don't think we'll be able to do both. They're not willing to negotiate at all. I kind of understand it because it's a massive commitment. But £78,000 a week, if we look at our existing contract, is till the end of this season for £51,000. So we're getting nearly 30 grand a week extra. And to be honest, the extra three years are going to make such a difference. They obviously have faith in us to build something here. I sort of liken it to Arteta's Arsenal or something of that like. You have to build the defence first and not look fluent. And then once we've done that, we can start working forward. But of course, our director of football and the club have got to help with that. 15 million in the bank, five of its transfer budget. And again, we're somehow losing money every month. I don't really get how we're losing so much money. The TV revenue is astonishingly big. Where are the gate receipts? There, 660,000. That seems quite small, actually. And then if we go and have a look at the transfer expenditure, I suppose last month, that's what it is. So before we join the club, it looks like they've got a lot of never ever deals where you're paying three, four years in the future. And the previous manager's not got to deal with that. The TV revenue and the wages across the club basically stack up. But the transfer expenditure of five million a month is not coming back into the club elsewhere. So that's where the big problem is, isn't it? You can see with some of them like this that there's just an extra instalment to go and once they're dried up and we're not losing those million pound a month or whatever then we'll be all right so let's go and get into the first game of today we'll skip ahead to tottenham hotspur but a brief glimpse behind the scenes it looks like despite it being the club we didn't expect it to be southampton might be our first long-term stop the club certainly want that here we go then tottenham versus southampton we head into the game as it stands in the top four Purely because of our start to the season. We're going to finish the day there, but if we're any higher, that means we've done something incredible. I can't see us getting a result in this game. We have, by the looks of it, because it's been suggested as a change, got Amp Folwell back for this match. So let me just quickly see if it mentioned how long he should play. 75 minutes. So we can give him a start. Hopefully he'll be able to make a difference. We've got international breaks afterwards, so should work out all right. 
Kavnaki's had a poor start to the season, so Lacero will be the sub striker. And then in terms of the bench, I think we're pretty much as strong as we can be. The only slight sticking point at the moment is Pulja perhaps coming in for one of the more advanced players. But I'm pretty happy with where we are. So the starting 11 for today, which has been consistent this year due to a lack of injuries, is Odyssey's in goal, Walker Peters and Bernardo the fullback, Salisu and Stark at centre half, Haidara Ward Prowse and Evgen the midfield central three, and then Campes and Gineppo, the Wonder Kid winger, and the brilliant winger of Amp Folwell, the star striker. We might drop Folwell to the number 10 role soon. We'll wait and see how those things pan out. But this is our last game before the international break, so we can throw everything at it. Let's go and get into the match, see if we can cause another shock. A very strange Tottenham Hotspur lineup. We'll ignore Allegri, the manager. There's some still there, the likes of Eric Dyer in the 11. In fact, that might be the only one. Jeremy Boga back in the attacking ranks, that's a good player to have in. But Hector Bellerin at right back. Did not expect to see that today. Oh, look who that is as well. On the bench, Lee Farrell. We had him at Hibernian. He was a brilliant young footballer. And he's made his way to the Premier League now. He didn't really perform for us, but he was a good footballer. So let's get the lads to prove a point. Let's get into the first half. We're going to try and be aggressive, try and get on the front foot, and try and keep the ball to prevent the pressure. But really good to see that some of our former head coach stars, Lee Farrell's made it to the Premier League. That's absolutely brilliant. And there he is. Went via Celtic as well. Really good footballer. Worth £30 million now. Brilliant to see. Into the first half we go. Let's hope he doesn't have an impact today. Well, we couldn't have asked for a much better first half than this. No real highlights. No real quality. And we've kept the ball quite well as well. Though Boga's coming forward here. He's trying to turn this around. We've got this big problem with the defenders running away. But this time he puts it wide at the post. Didn't threaten the keeper. Didn't really do much with it. But a really good first half. We've kept it quiet. We've kept it tight. And this is sort of what we're becoming famous for. Maybe at Southampton, this is just our style. At half-time, though, it remains goalless. There's not really been any chances. And we couldn't really be much happier. We've done as much as we could have expected. So let's just go and get into the second half and see if we can produce the same again. As we're back to defend a corner, just up to the hour mark. He's headed down and off the line by Bernardo. Brilliant defending. Folwell will chase it, but he won't get there. And he doesn't look fit in truth. We've demanded more as Ward-Prowse has his own corner. Into Gineppa who loses out. And Bellerin is on the counter. What's happened there? Who was that defender, Walker-Peters? He's just run well out of position to close someone down. Now this is something I have a real problem with in FM. As Bellerin puts it wide, we're going to have to change it. When you put on an instruction to man-mark a player, you don't expect a player to run from defending at a corner to then run up the pitch to go and mark him in his own box. And it's something that, that's taken a little too literally in this game for me. So we're going to take off that instruction. I'm just going to make sure nobody else has got it on. Because the assistant recommends them. And defensively, they make a massive difference. But you have to outweigh the balance and the risk. Because the game doesn't have the system in it. That it can then turn it off when you're attacking from a corner. And your player's back on the halfway line. They just run up and chase the player. And it becomes quite frustrating. So we've turned that off. We've got 20 minutes to go. We've got to take Folwell off. We'll take Evgen off, who's not been great. And Gineppo, he's not quite looked the same since injury, to be fair. So Vargas on for him. Volkov on for Evgen. And Folwell replaced by Lacero. We're basically, I hate to say this as you come back for this double header, we're playing for two nil nils. And if we can get the first one, I'm a very happy man. As we throw him from the left with Bernardo to Volkov. Campes the Brazilian wonder kid. Back to Bernardo. Into Volkov. Chance to shoot here. He's been left unopposed. And what a substitution that is. Sergei Volkov, the Ukrainian wonder kid. I've never quite got why he is, to be honest. He's not got the biggest potential. He's not a great player. And he doesn't train particularly well. But he's just turned up with a moment of brilliance there. And with 10 minutes to go, it is Tottenham nil, Southampton 1. And the blinding start to the season looks like it's about to continue. We've got five minutes of stoppage time, so we're going to get to the tactic screen, as of course our hosts have gone 4 3 3 to try and nick a goal. So we're going to have fullbacks on defend, we're going to leave them right back here. We're going to swap Haidara to a deep line playmaker on support. We're going to drop Volkov to a support duty. We're going to drop Vargas and Campes to the wide midfield roles. And we're just going to leave Lucero up there on his own, I think. In terms of the instructions, you all know the drill by now. I won't bore you with them. I'll just do them as we go along here. The most important thing, though, if we can cling on for 1-0s against teams like this, 
we could have one hell of a season. So let's drop that line of engagement. Let's just try and produce a good shape. And that's something generally our team's been pretty disciplined at. Can they hold on for this one? It would be a fabulous result. And it looks like the final whistle has gone. Spurs nil, Southampton won. We sat, we kept the ball, we moved it nicely. And then it just took one moment of brilliance from a substitute. And it is 1-0 away from home. A fantastic result. This blinding start to the season continues. I thought after the last game against Everton off camera, it would just start to dry up now. But what a turn up for the books that is. Into the international break we go. And I'd love to do the same to United after it. We'll be back in a moment to see if we can. We're back following the international break to face Manchester United. We've got some injury news, which isn't so great. But also, surprisingly, some transfer news. Now, that's because Matt Crocker, our director of football, has made an offer for Independiente's 15-year-old Stephen Hilton, who could be a player to keep an eye on in the future for 775000 Now, I've just gone and had a look at him. Two-star ability, five-star potential. He's 15 years of age. He looks like, possibly, one of the best wonder kids at 15 I have ever seen. I don't remember seeing a better centre-half than that at that age. So if he does come in, obviously he probably won't join till 18 based on the current rules. So we'll probably never ever get to see him or manage him. But my word, for Southampton, that could be something very, very special. I mean, he's already made 18 appearances. He's not even reached his 16th birthday. What a fantastic signing that would be. So we'll keep our eyes peeled on that. But of course, it's very unlikely we'll be here when he gets to 18 and joins the club. Which basically will be two years in January. So January 2029... I don't think we'll still be at Southampton. Not if we've done a good job. But let's go and get into the Manchester United game. We've finished the international break and the only injury casualty is not somebody who is on international duty. It is James Ward-Prowse who's out with knee tendonitis for six weeks. Now at the age of 32 I believe he is now. Still 31, about to be 32. That's a bit of a worry because they're the sorts of ones you never get quite back from. So what we're going to do, we're going to bring Travis in. We're going to switch Haidara and Travis. I think we might just leave him as a Mazala, see what he can do. Evgen's going to come out for Volkov as a sort of reward for Volkov for his brilliant performance off the bench last time. He's a good young player. He's got that ability. So let's just try and get him up to his best. And then aside from that, he's just balancing the squad. So Pulja will come onto the bench, give us a bit more depth there. And bar Volkov himself, no one's got a heavy match duty. And in a week, I think we've got the Carabao Cup ties. It's not, it's the week after. So we've got a proper breather after this anyway. So against Manchester United, we're going as strong as possible. And the lineup, we've got one chosen change, one enforced change. Volkov is the chosen one. He's come in for Evgen. And Ward Prowse replaced by Lewis Travis. That one enforced due to injury. Into the game we go. A big one to finish today's double header. And if it's anything like the first one, the result's going to make us very, very happy. And we could finish the episode in the top four. So we've not been able to get much out of the lads. Let's go and have a look when we get into it at the Manchester United lineup. Of course, we're playing our 4-2-3-1. We're trying to keep the ball well. We're trying to keep on the front foot. But this United side is very good. They've still got David De Gea in goal. They've got Sule at centre-half. De Jong in centre midfield. Frankie De Jong. They've still got Harry Kane playing off the left. They've got Bruno Fernandes in the number 10 role. They've got some top-class players. So it's going to be a very tough occasion. Greenwood's still there up front. They've got Kulazewski, a brilliant young player at Juventus in real life. This is tough as Walker Peters picks it up on the right. Through ball towards Folwell, headed away. And I'm expecting nothing but a defeat in this game. As Harry Kane goes through to Greenwood. Weird that they're playing that way round as Greenwood skins the defender. Not weird now, is it? Five minutes gone. Kane with the assist. Greenwood with the goal. And it's 1-0 to Manchester United. I think we're seeing the golfing class between Tottenham and United in this save. And unfortunately, we've got no chance of keeping up. They're one of the two sides above us in the league. And they're showing why. As Fernandez takes the free kick, or the corner kick, sorry, from the left-hand side. And he's headed just over the bar. It's been a blistering start from the visitors. We're going to drop to balance because we are getting outplayed a little bit here. And today it becomes keeping the score down. We've got to bear in mind who our opponents are. In slightly better news, as we're taking a bit of a beating today... Derby are bottom of the league, which shows we were right to move. They've not been able to compete at this level whatsoever. And there's a 17-point gap between us. As Fernandez puts the ball in, Sule heads just over. There is no doubt in my mind that we're going to lose this game. I guess the promising thing is, we're still in the top four. As Bernardo throws into Haidara. Back to Salisu. 
I am just going to change Travis to a box-to-box -box midfielder. See if we can get a little bit more bite in there. As we go back to Salisu again. To Stark. We've kept the ball well again. Still had over 50% of it. But we haven't got that same threat as we give it away high up the pitch. Greenwood finds De Jong. You know my superstition. I'm going to leave it. Look. Tactical change. And then Greenwood just over the bar. We get away with it this time. 10 minutes to the break. United utterly dominant. And they've got a free kick again at centre half. Played out short. They feel fairly comfortable in possession. And De Jong drops deep to pick it up. Goes wide to Harry Kane off the left. Into Fabian. Back to De Jong. Out to the left back and they go down the line. Good header from Walker-Peters. Travis out to Gineppo. But we just can't go forward here. And we've given it away again. Travis gets the challenge in. Fabian's there. It's straight back to United. They're on every single second ball. And it goes wide to Kulazewski on the right-hand side. The centre midfielder is drawn out to the position. But it's not going to help us on this occasion. As Simpson goes to De Jong. Look how deep Campes is now. He's not really playing as a winger at all. Simpson to De Jong. Up to Kulazewski. Chance to get the cross in at last. He's been closed down. Nobody's there. It drops off Fernandez, off Kane. Bodies on the line. And you've got to give that to our boys. They are throwing everything in front of those shots. As it is though, it's not enough at half time. I guess the only positive is somehow we're still in the game. Though Fernandez tries to change that with a corner. Headed away as far as Harry Kane. 20 seconds to hang on and then we can regroup. De Jong picks it up again to Ibanez. Through ball to Kane. It's going to be two. We can't quite hang on, can we? A great challenge from Walker-Peters. A brilliant save by Odysseys. And it's 1-0 at the break, but it should be far, far more. We're going to tell the boys they're unlucky because, to be fair, they've put in as much effort as we could have expected. We've just got to try and nick that one on the break like we did against Spurs. Because United haven't taken their chances here and they could still live to regret it. But we've got to show some sign of scoring a goal. Farwell tries to with Gineppo. He's got a runner in Walker-Peters through towards Volkov. And it's cleared away quite easily. Stark recycles it. Little glitch there as it finds Walker-Peters. Gineppo on the right wing. Back to Haidara to Volkov. More promising start here. Haidara again. Now can we create something from it? We can't. We keep all that possession and then just give it away. We're a bit toothless. United certainly are not. But Greenwood shot well saved by Odysseys. And we just lack that bit of quality today. We are not as good as Manchester United. And I'm afraid we've got to accept it. As Bruno Fernandes puts the corner in, Odysseys does well to claim. Still though, we look fairly solid defensively. And we're back with another throw on the right. Ten gone in the second half. Walker-Peters plays a 1-2 with Volkov. He's into the box pretty unopposed here. Gets towards the byline, into Campes. And he's headed away as far as Haidara. He's got Bernardo out on the left wing. Instead turns in and gives it straight to Bruno Fernandes. Poor decision making. It's going to cost us Odysseys again. What a performance from that number one. Greenwood's missed three or four brilliant chances. But it's decisions in those crucial moments. And at present, we're not making the right ones. So we're going to go and make some changes. Haidar has not been great, so I'm going to bring Paulja on for him. I'm going to try and leave Falwell, get 90 minutes out of him. Campes has had a rare poor game on the left. He'll be replaced by Vargas. And he'll obviously become an inverted winger on support. And then Volkov will be replaced by Evgen. Like for like, we changed them at the start. And Volkov, he just hasn't got that consistency yet. 25 to go, still 1-0 to United. We are going to try and go positive now because we've got to try and get something out of the game. They've got Harvey Elliott on off the right wing. Ismail Asar off the left. It's a very strong squad. And we tend to go United look fairly comfortable. But we've got a free kick with Eric Pulja. Four minutes left into the back post. Moussa Gineppo heads in. And again, from absolutely nowhere, we've scored a goal. And we've got another chance of nicking a brilliant point. Can you imagine if we finish this episode with four points out of six? What a turn up for the books. Back to balanced we go. There are four minutes of stoppage time. And just like the Tottenham game, we are going to make sure we cling on for dear life. Walker Peters, full back on defend. Bernardo, exactly the same. Travis will be a ball winner on defend. Pulja's already as deep as he can be. Gineppo and Vargas drop deeper. Evgen drops to a support duty. I mean, actually, what we could do, we'll put Evgen in central midfield and we'll drop Pulja to the anchor man. He can be exactly that. Anchorman on defend. Evgen will be a deep line playmaker on defend. And we're going to sit absolutely everyone, bar the striker Folwell, behind the ball. We're going to do all the time-wasting tactics. You know that by now. Because at the start of this episode, there was no chance of us getting four points. We clung on there against Tottenham and got the one on the break. And we've stifled Man United. We've relied on a brilliant Odyssey's performance. A poor Mason Greenwood one. 
and it looks like we might nick another point. Four minutes of stoppage time to go. We're time wasting our backsides off and it's going to work. It is not fluent. It is not pretty to watch. It is not exciting. But after six years of the way we have been playing, you've got to say it's pretty impressive that we can switch up and do this. We're showing a lot of versatility as a manager. Our team is really fighting hard here. They're inspired. They're motivated. They're defensively solid. And let's see where it leaves us in the Premier League because it has been a blistering start. There we go then. I know we've played a game more than most sides, but nine games played, 20 points and a plus seven goal difference. We've already played United who are top. We've played Wolves who are fourth, Everton who are sixth. We've played Leicester who are eighth, Tottenham who are 11th. We've not played many of those bottom sides yet. I know that we've sort of said about the favourable run at the start of the season, but realistically, the way it's panning out at present, we've actually played most of the sides in the top 12 to 14. I mean, I know we've played Villa and Leeds, but of that bottom four, we've only played West Brom. We're at home to Burnley next, who saved our Premier League status last season. There is a lot to look forward to here. So let's go and have a look at the schedule, because you all know what game is coming up next. And it's one that I'm very excited for, but could be a potential banana skin. We've got five league games in the meantime, and then we will be back to face Derby County, our former club. They, of course, are the ones we left to come to the Premier League with Southampton, it was seven minutes away from going oh so wrong. We were almost relegated. Derby came up. But now look at where we are. It's proven just to be the right decision. We will face Derby and we will face West Brom next time in two massive games in the Premier League for us. As it is, we could be fighting on a different front this season. Defensively, we are so, so solid. And as long as that continues, sky's the limit, regardless of how few we score. But I'm of course going to leave you on this competition screen so we can revel in the fact that we are third in the Premier League. We can't fall lower than fourth today. We've got Norwich lower league opposition in the fourth round of the Carabao Cup. And at this point, we're having to reevaluate what a good season is. A blistering start due to brilliant defensive performances and long may it continue. If you did enjoy this episode, those two gutsy displays, please do put a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from two long-term stories. A big second after the season to come at Bangor City in our Builder Nation. And then we'll be back here in two days' time for the biggest of rivalries as a manager. Our former club Derby, our current club Southampton. Hopefully, there'll be fireworks on and off the pitch. Let me know in the comments what you think of our start, though. Defensively, we've been absolutely scintillating. There's no team with a better defensive record in the league, and it shows. It's been a fantastic display, and hopefully, it'll continue throughout the rest of the season. A big new contract as well, security financially and in terms of our job. And you can catch up with all of the playlists so far, including the live stream series and the podcast channel in the eye above. And I'll see you next time for another big game with Southampton. As we face the club, we left for them. Derby County up next. They're bottom of the Premier League and we need to avoid a slip up. I'll see you there.